Здравствуйте! My name is Natalia Lomeiko. I'm one of the winners of the Michael Hill International Violin Competition. And I'm here today to talk to you about a particular piece that is very dear to my heart, the Canzonetta, the second movement of Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto. Um, I will play the beginning uh, for you, just to show you uh, how it starts. So the second phrase starts over here. Now, um, you would be probably surprised to know that Tchaikovsky wrote an entirely different movement to start with, uh, which we now know as the meditation from the three pieces that he um, wrote for his friend. Um, and that piece was um, thought to be too emotionally charged and too long, perhaps especially uh, given that the first moment of the concerto is so, so long and challenging and full of uh, passion and virtuosity and dynamics. So Tchaikovsky thought to scrap the meditation and replace it with something a little bit more simple and more compact in its form. That's why we have the opening phrase that later comes back with slightly different accompaniment. So even the opening um, of the concerto is always written in piano. He even puts a suggestion to wear the mute, uh, which is great as long as the mute you are using, uh, perhaps a wooden one, projects well in the hall. Now, um, interestingly enough, I recently discovered that the opening uh, of the violin uh, line in this movement probably comes from his uh, melody, which is called the Old French Song, uh, from his children's album for the piano, which actually goes very similarly, if you hear the notes, um, to the second movement that we know in the violin concerto, so something like this. Um, actually uses exactly the same key and the same notes at the beginning of um, the old French song, which apparently was sung by uh, Tchaikovsky's nanny, um, who was teaching him uh, when he was little as well. Um, and as you see, the melody is the same, only in 3-4. And the same harmonic progression and so on and I think it gives um, a great um, great uh, feeling of a singing kind of tone that we need to aspire to achieve in this melody um, the bow we need to really pay attention so it is almost endless we're creating a, a bow that basically never stops so even when we finish the phrase, the first phrase and the cello and the violins are now coming in in quavers, we are still moving all through our, all through the bow, creating a very smooth bow connection uh, between all the notes to show that the melody is very long. It is a very typical um, quality in Tchaikovsky's music to use a constant vibrato, constant bow, to produce a very, very, very long line. 
Um, now, the middle section is something very different. It is uh, in a relative major key. We have the E flat major. And we need a totally different uh, perspective from the bow arm. We need a lot more air, a lot more uh, vibrato to create a fresher and perhaps more youthful and positive outlook. Um, so we can combine the faster vibrato and faster bow to create that character. is writing always gives and adds a little bit of freedom so we can make them tiny bit more rubato which uh, will uh, bring back the melody on a new level so we lead up to it again Again, we now need to follow uh, the harmonic progression of the orchestra and react to different harmonies. How do we react? We listen whether the harmony is open, positive, happy, sad, intense, and we use different bow techniques, slower speed. You can search a little bit from what you are hearing to, to react in your, um, in your playing. And uh, what is uh, amazing is that it, uh, the, the theme from the beginning comes back with slight variation. So we have now like an improvisatory quality all the time. So written out, which I suggest we take not quite literally as da 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 the very strict triplet rhythm, but make again quite quite a bit of flexibility in the bar. Now about the trill and the ending, it is this is the way it is written out. However, as a performer, we can um, make the uh, ending of that bar quite free and vary its. Um, its freedom, shall we say, its amount of time. So one time we can actually do it right in tempo, so something like this. Two, three. Because Tchaikovsky writes out a natural ritenuto. Another time we can perhaps, especially the last time it happens, I do it on the D string. So almost sit on the trill for as long as you can in the middle of the bow. To grow from nothing into a massive crescendo again. Now, this B flat. Very often, uh, performers are a little bit scared to get to that B flat on the A string. I suggest to pay more attention to the bow arm at this point and slow the speed of your bow in order to control the shift better. So nobody in the audience will notice this, but I hear the approach to the B flat and only then move the bow freely once I have arrived. That does guaranteeing uh, safe arrival, shall we say? Yeah, so again, slow bow, slowing down, and then move. I create a contrast here before really finally opening the phrase. Past 
to the orchestra that continue the choral like chords that uh, came at the beginning of the movement. And um, I strongly recommend practicing um, with almost no vibrato from the beginning of the melody to the very end in order to even out the bow and then add the vibrato on top of that in order to, to make sure that you are treasuring each moment of each note so it doesn't the sound doesn't die so very often the students do this so i hear a lot of sort of sighing but instead really try to make a longer phrase and the music will thank you for it now i think that's all the time we have just to cover very basic things about this movement um please follow uh, me on instagram uh, natalia Lomeko, Valen, and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please.